Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Bearbackers. It's always good to see everyone on a Monday. A big week at home coming up this weekend. Starts with tonight's Nathan Brown show at, with Justin Acre at 7 p.m. at Walk-Ons. Also on Buzz 2, 106.7. Thursday, women's soccer hosts Florida Gulf Coast, 7 p.m. at the Bill Stevens Complex. That is Soctoberfest theme. Friday, our tennis team plays in the Sanford Invitational in Birmingham. That's Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Uh, the Volleyball Sugar Bears host Lipscomb at 6 p.m. Friday at Prince Center in A-Sun action. That's block party theme. Saturday, men's soccer hosts Queens at 2 p.m. at the Bill Stevens Complex. That's World Cup Day. Football returns to the Stripes to host Abilene Christian. This is the one we've talked about for a while. It's UCA versus ACU in a UAC game. That's not confusing at all. I have no idea how many times I'm going to type that incorrectly this weekend. <laughs> the over and under is about eight, so we'll see. Uh, then we finish up with a busy Sunday. Uh, tennis closes out at Birmingham. Women's soccer hosts Stetson at noon at the Bill Stevens Complex. That's Youth Soccer Day. And then volleyball host Austin P. 2 p.m. at the Prince Center. That's Sugar Rush Day. Giving everyone a nice doubleheader of A-Sun action that afternoon on campus. Soccer and then volleyball. We're going to start today with women's soccer. Coach Bishop has to get out of here quick. He has a recruit on campus. Uh, we opened the A-Sun Conference play with a bang last week. We won one to nothing at Queens over in Charlotte, North Carolina on Thursday. Came back home and dominated Kennesaw State. Five to nothing yesterday at the Bill Stevens Complex. Against Queens, Sydney Bro, a senior, actually a graduate from Ontario, Canada, scored the game's only goal in the 64th minute. Uh, speaking of Sydney, she had quite the week. Uh, yesterday's five to nothing win, she scored two goals and added an assist. And that one we led two nothing at the half and added three more goals in a dominant second half. That makes us two and zero in A Sun play. Two more home games this week. As I said, Florida Gulf Coast, 7 o'clock Thursday, and Stetson at noon Sunday. Gives us a really good chance to get off to a great start in A-Sun play. Now let's get Coach Jeremy Bishop up. Thanks for being here. It's always good to see everybody on a Monday, especially after a great weekend. Um, so I think uh, last week we just talked about how we felt like we had really made a lot of progress uh, moving through the non-conference phase of the season. Uh, felt like we were playing our best soccer coming off the weekend with the win against Oral Roberts and the, and the close match with Tulsa that we lost. Um, and so then a Sun play started this week. Um, flew over to uh, Charlotte on, on Wednesday, um, played there on Thursday night, um, played really well. Um, for, first 15 minutes I felt like we were a little slow, but the rest of the match we were really good. Um, gave ourselves a good chances to win that game, really kept them pretty limited in their opportunities. Uh, got a goal midway through the second half and was able to hang on. Um, one of the things that's really difficult, I don't know about for other sports if the surfaces change that much, but for soccer between grass and turf, it's, it's like a different game. And so when you go on the road and you play at a place that has turf, which Queens does, uh, it's really a learning curve of figuring out how to play the game again um, with those uh, circumstances. So the girls did a great job of adjusting to that. Uh, you just got to be a little bit more direct. You can't, um, you really can't settle the ball. It's just always got to be on the move um, when you're on that surface. So we did a good job of that, uh, contained them, uh, and got ourselves the first win. Got home on Friday, prepared for Kennesaw, uh, which was Sunday. Um, so we watched tape on Kennesaw all day Friday, part of the day Saturday, getting ourselves ready for them, and, and really thought we were going to be in another uh, fight like uh, on Thursday night. Um, but we were able to get a couple goals in the first half. Um, uh, the first goal uh, as a coach was what you, how you draw it up. Um, we talk about uh, the way we, our style of play. We want to be a pressing team, get after the other team in their defensive third, turn them over in their half and try to get it goal. And uh, I know there were several of you that were at the game that saw this, but it was just the way you want it to be. Uh, they tried to play out on a goal kick and we pressed them turned him over, two passes straight to goal, and Kelly finished it. Sydney started that um, with a pass to Anna, Anna to Kelly, and, uh, and we finished it. Um, so one to nothing pretty early in the match, I don't know, 15 minutes or so in, um, and then got another one long, long shot, actually, I don't know if it was a shot, but it went in um, for, for Gabby, um, made it two to nothing. 
Uh, she was putting the ball in the box. So we always talk about keep it on the field, put it behind the back line, good things are going to happen. Uh, and that one sailed into the back post. So um, got up two to nothing. Came out in the second half, and Kennesaw completely switched their system. Um, and so I was a little concerned about that. Um, worried that that, that was going to be confusing for us because that we hadn't planned for that. Uh, we've obviously played against different systems throughout the year, and so we were able to you know, pass information to the players on what they needed to do to be successful against that system. And, and we, we did a great job of it, finding the players that needed to get the ball, and then uh, kind of floodgates opened up um, in the second half, and we scored a lot of goals, Sydney getting two. And Megan, our freshman I've talked to you guys about, got one as well. So um, the, I think it was the third goal, Megan's, um, that was their corner kick. And we won the ball out straight away. Soccer field's 120 yards long, if you don't know. Um, and won the ball out. And Tristan Pavat, a sophomore from here in Conway, um, picked up the ball and ran with it for about 80 yards. And she's really fast. Um, getting past everyone, defenders start to close her down. Great pass through to Megan, um, one on one with the keeper, and she finished it. So it was a great goal. Um, so, so that was the weekend. Uh, it was a fantastic way to start a sun play. Um, so it's weird going from you know trying to figure out how to keep confidence after a tough non-conference slate um, to now making sure that we're not overconfident going into the next weekend matches. So that's where we're at, uh, sitting on top of the a sun um, and, and with two games in. Obviously a long way to go, um, but feeling like we uh, we're in a good spot. Florida Gulf Coast is a team that will be considered one of the favorites going into the season. So a big match for us on Thursday. Um, I knew there was a lot of things going on this weekend, but I didn't know there was so much going on. So what a great weekend uh, to be on campus. Hope we can get out to some soccer, football, volleyball, um, men's soccer as well. So um, look forward to seeing everyone uh, on campus cheering on the Bears. If I can answer any questions, I'll be glad to. Otherwise, I'm going to go meet my recruit. Go Bears. Just to clarify, uh, Tristan didn't actually pick the ball up and run 80 yards like he said. That's not allowed in soccer. She controlled it for 80 yards. How about that? Our men's and women's teams both ran in Nashville cross country in the Michael Pretorius Invitational this past weekend. We won both divisions. Our women scored 31 points to win their division. The men scored 38 to win theirs. Uh, the Bears set 11 personal records, earned four top 10 finishes. If you remember, from what uh, we were told a couple weeks ago, they were running on the course that will host the A-Sun Championships at the end of October. So we got a real good taste in our mouth for that course. Both teams will be off this coming weekend. They run at the Chili Pepper Festival up in Fayetteville on September 29th. Our volleyball Sugar Bears opened A-Sun play last Friday, lost three to one to North Alabama in Florence, despite 43 assists from Kalen Coons. We rebounded and swept both Mississippi Valley and UAPB three to nothing in back-to-back -back matches on Saturday. We might have a player of the week coming out this afternoon. I'm not allowed to tell you yet, but keep your eyes up, open about 1 p.m. today. At home twice this week, as we said, beginning at 6 p.m. Friday against Lipscomb, and then 2 p.m. Sunday against Austin P. Now let's hear from Coach John Newberry. He apparently went ham, uh, went crazy at uh, school today, and I don't know where these red shorts came from. They're not ours. <laughs> so. It does have a bear claw in there, so I don't know. Anyways, thanks to Megan Fodio for these. I appreciate it. We'll be returning them quickly. But, um, yeah, so uh, this concluded our fourth weekend, um, our preseason or non-conference segment, even though we did start conference. Um, what happened, uh, so North Alabama is our travel partner. Uh, we are um, obligated to uh, schedule a home and away for midweek. Um, we tried to schedule them during another part of a weekend, but some other schools did not want to accommodate that situation. So uh, North Alabama just happened to be hosting the fourth weekend. I figured by, by then we would know exactly what we're going to be doing um, with the team and the roster and everything. Like we, We'd be ready for them. Um, so just a quick update, um, opening weekend for us here at home against Michigan State. Um, mentioned this already, but Macy Blackburn went down, um, and that turned out was season-ending injury. 
Um, she just had surgery on the 13th on her knee. Um, and uh, so she, she's doing great, but unfortunately she's done here at UCA. Um, she graduates uh, in December and then she'll move on to hopefully play beach volleyball um, somewhere else, probably closer to home. Um, that's to work on getting her master's. So um, Macy's left a, a big hole in our scheme. Um, it's losing one of your four-year starters is, is it's, it hurts, it hurts badly. So we have not been able to keep our offense very balanced. We have not been able to um, uh, just kind of keep the other defense at bay. Um, and so we're just, that's, that's kind of the part that we're looking for right now, just to get everything back in order the way that we were used to. It's very difficult. We've got a big 6'3 freshman, Grayson Button, who's been getting a lot of playing time, but she's a freshman. Um, it's, just, it's just different. It's just different. So uh, she's doing great, puts up a massive block, but we've got we've to we've get some turnover. Some, uh, she's got she's to pick up some slack. Um, and so pressure's on her. Um, just it's hard as a freshman. It is what it is. But uh, other than that, we've got some great pieces moving forward. Um, North Alabama moved a kid from the right side over to the middle, and she is destroying everybody right now. Just phenomenal athlete, great arm, very, very heavy swing, hard to pass. But um, they had a ruckus crowd. It, it, was, it was very intense there. The baseball team was right behind our bench. Uh, the men's basketball team was on the opposite side uh, yelling up. So they, they had us cornered. Um, and they were ready for anything. Um, the refereeing was not the best we've seen, so that played another factor. Um, it went both ways, but it, it just it just never could get in a rhythm. So it's, it's unfortunate. I, I hate absolute losing that game. We will be ready when they come back. We will be ready when they come back. Um, and I expect the gym to be way more intense than what they provided for us. Uh, revenge is fun sometimes. <laughs> Um, and I'm looking very much forward to it. But moving forward, we've got uh, Lipscomb coming up this weekend. Uh, Lipscomb's just kind of been our kryptonite. They are an aggressive serving team. They just played Abilene Christian on Saturday. They had 19 aces against Abilene Christian. They all said 14 errors. 19 aces is, you just, you don't see that. That's, uh, that's I don't know what was going on with Abilene, but uh, it, it's impressive. That's an impressive number. So. We know they're a good serving team, um, so we're looking forward to getting it, getting into practice this week and, and getting after it. So, um, but yeah, you just uh, guys, we got some work to do. We got to we got to fill this middle middle void um, within our team, and then I, I think we'll be we'll be good to go. At, we'll be a lot more comfortable, uh, if you will, be able to compete. So I'm looking forward to getting into practice today and getting that solidified. So um, I look forward to having you guys Friday. Enjoy some football on Saturday and then once again on Sunday. Looking forward to these games with us. Can't wait to see you guys there. Thank you, guys. Just so you know, these are my pants, by the way. <laughs> Nobody else in this room could probably wear my pants anyway, so that's good. Our men's soccer team opened A-Sun Conference play last Saturday at home against Bellarmine. We ended in a 1-1 tie, and the stats were nearly identical. Both had nine shots, both had three shots on goal, both had two saves. Very evenly matched game. Uh, this Saturday it is World Cup Day at the Bill Stevens Complex when we host Queens at 2 p.m. Now let's hear from Coach Frank Kohlenstein. Hey, always nice to be here. Uh, since I was last here, we went out to uh, Colorado, which was uh, a great experience. Uh, I was able to have the team over to my house. I know you're saying, well, man, that must be a long commute every day. It can be. I've done it a number of times. It's about 14 hours, you know, and sometimes when I'm late to the office, the assistants give me a hard time. But uh, no, Deb and I do have a house still in, in Golden, Colorado. And uh, one of the assistants actually drove out there with me so we could take two more players on the trip. Uh, and the team did come over to my house. We went to Golden and uh, uh, went into Clear Creek. That was our regen ice bath. So, you know, a lot of really good experiences. Uh, while we're out there and then you know I learned one other thing while I was out there too uh, you know 
trying to uh, learn about some things going on in the world of sport. Uh, we're just hoping we can get as much attention as uh, Coach Prime does out there and get that kind of success. Uh, but, you know, uh, while we were out there, we, we played at Air Force, which is over 7,000 feet, and the guys did really well uh, when we played there. And then this weekend, we have another conference match. I was, uh, you know, upset about our uh, result on Saturday. I think that, uh, you know, I was talking to Coach Brown about this, and, you know, we're hoping that our experiences that we've had playing such a good schedule is going to help us for our future. And we hope that'll keep, kick in uh, this weekend for us uh, so that uh, we're ready for Queens. Queens last year was ahead of us uh, three to one with seven minutes left in the match. And we were able to score uh, three goals in the last seven minutes. So we're hoping this time maybe we could score three goals in the first seven minutes. And, uh, I was asking Dr. Davis for some advice about missing the penalty kick the other day, and he said he didn't have any. Because <laughs> it, it, it last last year when he came out, it didn't didn't work for him either. But I said, you know, we just have to practice more. So we'll get those guys practicing, and I, I hope you'll come out on Saturday. We play at two o'clock, uh, and then you're gonna have a day of. Volleyball on Friday, football and football on Saturday, have a soccer match on Thursday, so uh, another volleyball on Sunday, so you, a lot of stuff you can do. I hope you come out and uh, watch our guys play. And then uh, Jessica, I wanted to say, you know, I really enjoyed your thing about joy, because it, it's interesting, if you come into our soccer house, there's Frank's Pyramid of Joy, and it starts with what fun is, what makes you happy, and then finally at the top is joy, and I really appreciated reading what you said. So thanks a lot, and everybody, bear claws up. Yeah, the uh, penalty kicks he was referring to, several of us went out last spring and tried them, none of us were very successful, believe me. It wasn't just the president. Mine might have been the worst, actually. Uh, football Bears put up a really good fight at number two North Dakota State on Saturday before losing 49-31. Uh, great atmosphere, great experience for the players. Uh, we definitely got the full effect of the Fargo Dome this time. There was 15,000 people, 15,016 to be exact. Uh, loud band, really loud music. Uh, just an overall pretty impressive atmosphere. Uh, we finished with 431 yards total offense. A lot of that came from junior running back Shanderick Powell. Our Hoxie Mustang, probably the first Hoxie Mustang we've ever had by way of North Alabama. He ran for 218 yards on 18 carries. For you math folks, that's 12.1 yards per carry. Pretty impressive. He's averaging for the year 11.4 yards per carry. So that's a first down every time he touches the ball. Pretty impressive. They also caught four passes for 30 yards and returned four kickoffs for 99 yards. That's 347 all-purpose yards from a guy who stands about that tall. The last time a player rushed for 200 plus yards against North Dakota State was 2010. Doesn't happen very often against that defense. He had 218 rushing yards. Easily the best player on the field. I don't think there's any, any uh, debate about that. Uh, we had our chances. We got to within 28-17 on Shunderick's 71-yard run in the second quarter, and then Darius Hale's 10-yard touchdown run, 216 left in the game, made it 49-31. They're really good. We knew they were going to be good, and they were. They've won nine national championships for a reason. They have a display in this area underneath their, their stands. It's uh, all the NFL players that they've had in their history organized by team, by which NFL team. There's exactly one team, the Carolina Panthers, that they've never had anybody on that team. One total. They've had, I mean, this is counting draftees, free agent signees, you know, players that actually played, but they've had someone at least in camp with them on all but one team. Pretty impressive uh, stat. Two teams with just one. So, I mean, they've had them on multiple teams. Uh, the most notable are quarterbacks Carson Rentz and Trey Lance, the ones everyone have heard of. 
again, this experience, along with the uh, 50,000 people at Oklahoma State in week one was going to be invaluable to the Bears. We have to be one of the most battle-tested teams in the country, I would, I would guarantee. Uh, this week, we turned our attention to conference play when we host our first UAC game against Abilene Christian, 6 p.m. on the stripes. The Wildcats are 2-1 and one on the season, wins over Northern Colorado, Prairie View A&M, and then last Saturday they lost 27-20 to 20 to number nine Incarnate Word at home in Abilene. The Wildcats were picked fifth in the preseason poll in the, in the UAC. Our last meeting was two years ago. We didn't play them last year. We won 42-21 down in Abilene. We outscored them 28-0 in the second half. Uh, a couple of numbers from that game. Braylon Smith threw for 358 yards. Christian Richmond had three touchdown receptions. Lawan Winningham caught eight passes for 211 yards. We had 543 yards of total offense. Just a pretty thorough victory. They are considerably better than they were two years ago. They've got a lot of transfers, a lot of D1 transfers. Uh, expect to be a lot more competitive this time out, and we're pretty happy to have them at home. Uh, again, kickoff 6 p.m. Supposed to be beautiful weather. Uh, plenty of time to catch the men's soccer game at 2, then get over here for some tailgating on Bruce Street. Tailgating opens at noon, obviously. Now let's hear from Coach Nathan Brown. Thanks, Steve. Um, just wrapping up Saturday uh, afternoon, just just want to want to echo, um, and I think Steve mentioned how how proud I was of, of our fight, our effort. Um, you know, going into North Dakota State, we had a, just a tiny sample size from 2020. We got an opportunity to go over there and play um, play them in their only game. We mentioned that last week. That that fall, um, obviously, us playing a, a full full schedule um, during the middle of COVID, um, which was was a feat in itself. But they they scratched off one game. We were fortunate enough. Dr. Teague did a great job manufacturing that game. But um, that that wasn't what we walked into Saturday. It, it was it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. It was um, from top to bottom the way they run their program and the way they run, uh, you know, just just the game day, uh, you know, vibes of, of of the Fargo Dome to the to the band to the entrance. I mean, that's what it's that's what it's supposed to look like. And there, there's a reason why. Um, you know, they've won nine of the last 12. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's an unbelievable program. And it's not just the players. I mean, I think obviously their coaching staff's phenomenal. They, they, you know, they've, they've done it with three different head coaches. Um, but, but just, you know, everything, everything is very detailed there. And, uh, you know, I said in my post-game uh, press, press conference that that's what, it's, that's, that's what we want to strive to be. Obviously, and I told our team this, uh, you know, we're, we're not them yet. We're not. And, and, you know, sometimes you got to take a piece of humble pie, and, and that's okay. And uh, that doesn't mean that we're not a very good football team, but we're not uh, what North Dakota State is yet. Now, I would like to get to that point this year and maybe face them again. And I don't think there's any question that the team we played Saturday, and I, I, I wasn't hesitant to say this to Coach Entz, and he was, he was very complimentary of our squad and how we, how we played. He thinks we, we've got a chance to be a deep playoff team as well, and he's seen a lot of them. Um, but I told him, I said, look, I, you, you, that's, you're at minimum a semifinal to the national championship team, no question. And for us to go in their place, you know, long trip, all of that um, was impressive. And, you know, we had a ton of great individual efforts. Um, but, but, you know, they, they did just enough um, to, to get on our edge in some, some areas with some of the things we were doing uh, with some of their length and size that, that gave us some problems. Um, you know, we had two turnovers, and the two turnovers hurt us. Um, you know, the first one was a fluke deal, great play. They looped their, they looped their nose man out. We had uh, Kylan James in a flat route, and I promise you, if you saw, see the film, he might still be running. If Will can get him that ball, like he, it may have been a 70-yard touchdown. Uh, but the, the nose tackle looped around, tipped the ball up, made a great catch to himself. Um, unfortunately, our offensive lineman wasn't able to get him down. Will was on the ground. He took a hit. Uh, but if Will doesn't get that tipped, I mean, we get the ball to Kylan, that's a whole, I mean, that's a whole different deal in the first quarter. I mean, that, that gives them, that lets them jump up 14 to zero. And then coming out of halftime, you know, we're down, you know, we're down 28, 17, I believe at that point. Um, and, uh, you know, we got the ball first. So you're looking for a great opportunity. We, we get two short plays on first, second down, third down. Will steps up, throws a great seam ball to Gerard Barnes. He makes the first guy miss. And really, he's one guy away from taking that one uh, 70 yards. And he ends up 
making another guy kind of move and he's falling down, guy punches it out. They did a great job and they were able to recover. So then they've turned that into points. So there's 14 points off of turnovers. Um, and unfortunately on def defense, we weren't able to manufacture any turnovers. So um, that hurts. That's a 14 point swing there um, that, that you know, could be avoidable, um, but that's football. We've got to learn to, we've got to learn to tread water and get through it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the, 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 the individual effort, unbelievable job by Sean Derrick. I thought Will was very poised again, um, played, played at a high level, completed a lot of passes. I thought Gerard had a good night. I thought Miles Butler had a good night. I thought Kylan James had a good night. I thought our offensive line held up. I think Will held the ball a couple of times a little bit too long, took a sack. Uh, a couple sacks that really, you know, um, that our, that our offensive line probably gave him enough time on. That was a that was um, they may not have an NFL defensive lineman right now, um, but they rotated about eight to nine guys that are, uh, you know, they, I, I, I compare them to our version of Logan Jessup. I mean, they're just relentless, go hard. They're very precise. They 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 don't leave their gaps. Um, they're just a they're just a relentless. Um, Ran organization and, it, and it's and it's and it's and it's tough. Um, offensively, very impressed with their two quarterbacks. Um, we knew their quarterbacks could run, but seeing them in person was even more impressive. We were, we were we didn't do a good enough job on first and second down, so we we didn't get them in enough third and long situations. I said last week we had to get them out of their two and three tight end sets. Well, we let them live in that, and they put some they put an extra tackle in the game, which they hadn't done a lot. So they went six offensive linemen uh, in the game, pulled a pulled a wide receiver out. So. Um, that was that was something we had to adjust to, made adjustments throughout the night. And really, if you watch the film and you break it down from the point of attack, our, our defensive line, they did a great job. I mean, you look at that offensive line, they were big. I mean, we won't play a bigger offensive line uh, than that the rest of the year. Um, but point of attack, you know, Logan Jessup, David Walker, Stephon McGlon, Bradley Clark inside. I mean, those guys, those guys held their own. Um, where they got us was with adding an extra hat with the run game with the quarterback. They got us, and we've got to adjust to that. We've got to be better at that. Um, they also got us a little bit on the edge. You know, we were getting they're, – they're, they're masters at getting you on the edge and keeping that hands right there, you know, just on the edge of holding. You know, people – I had about three different texts. Why don't they call holding? I said, well, they're good at it. I mean, the ref didn't call it. You know, it is what it is. We've got to adjust. We've got to rip off and, and make a play. So that's something we're going to continue to work on this week. And so um, they're very good at that. And so um, that, was, that allowed them to get their offense on the edge a little bit. They didn't run the ball up the middle much. And that's, that's a testament to our D-line. It was really more so edge stuff. Um, so that's an adjustment uh, that we'll make. I was so pleased with a couple guys that, that really gutted through the, the night. Tamari and Wilson, um, he played just about every snap. Um, and he was a game time decision with his shoulder. Uh, didn't hurt it any worse, um, but man, he was a warrior um, on Saturday. Uh, Christian Richmond, I mean, he played with a, basically a cast as a receiver on his, on his finger. He had surgery nine days ago, put a plate in his pinky. He decided that he, he, he wanted to play. He found a way to play. Um, just, just guys fighting for the program and for this school. Um, that's what I appreciate. And so, um, you know, that's what it looks like. That's the standard, we know that. Um, you know, and, and, and look, like Fr Frank said, uh, you know, we're battle tested, you know, and, and so you hope um, in playing two of the first three weeks against teams like Oklahoma State and North Dakota State, my opinion, North Dakota State, that's, that's just like playing an FBS team. Um, you know, playing teams like that hopefully bodes well for you uh, starting this weekend um, and, and getting, to, getting into conference play. We feel like we match up well in our conference. Uh, we feel like we've got the talent, skills, speed, size, uh, that matches up very similar similar to a lot of our teams in this conference, and we feel like we can gain an edge in some areas as well. So um, we're excited to open the UAC season at home. Um, Abilene's a great program. Obviously, they're they're a hot team right now. A lot of people like them. They see the talent that they have. Steve mentioned they're full of transfers. They've got 42 transfers. I think 30, 31 or 32 of them are FBS transfers. Uh, they, they've reloaded and they're going to look the part. So when they walk out here on Saturday, you're going to be like, man, that's an impressive looking team because a lot of those guys are power five transfers. They're two starting tackles, of te University of Texas transfers, uh, starting def two starting defense, one defensive ends from uh, UConn, one defensive ends from, uh, from Texas Tech. I mean, they're, they're starting quarterbacks to transfer from Texas Tech. Um, they, they, they're just littered with, with, with players, bounce back players. And they're in, a, they're in a spot in Texas where they get a lot of bounce backs, right? You know, and so that's, 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 that they took full advantage of that. And uh, they're impressive on the hoof. And, and so um, they had a tough game on Saturday night. UIW has obviously been a very, very uh, high caliber program the last couple of years. 
Uh, matter of fact, we watched a lot of Incarnate Word film um, preparing for North Dakota State because that's North Dakota State put Incarnate Word out of the playoffs last year in the semifinals. Um, so we watched a lot of what Incarnate Word did. So we were pretty familiar with what Incarnate Word did. Obviously, they're ranked in the top ten right now. So that was a that was a big opportunity for Abilene, and they they held their own. Um, and and they got a home they got Incarnate Word at home and. And Carnot Ward was able to, to push push away in the end and get the win, but a very competitive game. So uh, that that proved that Abilene obviously belongs with with some of the great teams in this 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 uh, level of football too. So um, we know they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna run an attacking style defense. They're gonna be very multiple on offense. Quarterback is a very good player. Um, he can run the ball along with he's got a he's got a really good arm. He's not afraid to take chances. He wants to throw the ball down the field. They've got some really long wide receivers that they want to take shots with. Um, but they're like us. They like playing with tight ends and fullbacks as well. So um, we'll, we'll be ready for a multiple uh, presentation on offense um, where hopefully we can gain an edge. And I thought we played fairly well the other night uh, is in special teams. Um, you know, Sean Derrick had almost 100 yards in return yards. He was so close a time or two to skating out of that. Uh, I thought our coverage units were really good. Um, on kick returns, they averaged, I think, the ball right inside of the 25, so that's better than a touchback. Um, and then our, 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 uh, our punt team continues to be, I think Chandler only had three punts on Saturday, but I think he averaged 46 yards a punt, and we're netting it up very well. So hopefully we can gain an advantage and get an opportunity to get our return guys um, going this week. And, and, and Gerard really hadn't had a chance at punt return just because of the way the kicks have been. So hopefully he'll get some opportunities this weekend. But um, it's going to be a going to be a good game. I mean, look, look, Abilene's picked fifth. I don't think they're a fifth place team. I don't think there's any any doubt about that. I think they're uh, matter of fact, last year they were playing the final week against Stephen F. Austin for the, uh, the the WAC championship. And Stephen F. Austin, I think, won that game by three. So they've got a lot of momentum on their side and obviously starting out two and one against uh, you know, three FCS opponents, um, they, they've handled their business like they, they're supposed to. And they, you know, they probably weren't picked to win the UIW game, but they made it very competitive. So, um, so we're hoping that what we've played to this point will give us an opportunity to, uh, to hopefully have an edge. I feel like, feel like our schedule uh, is a little bit tougher than what Abilene's has been so far. Um, and, and hopefully that, that'll, that'll give us a chance on Saturday to, 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 to have a step on them. Um, but again, they're a great, great, well-coached team, uh, great program. They're, they're trending in the right direction. They've done a good job uh, over the last few years recruiting the right type players for their program. So, um, you know, 6 o'clock kickoff, like Steve said, we need, to, we need a great atmosphere. Um, you know, it, it's, 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 always, it's always fun when we get this place packed out because I do believe when this place is going, it's, it's one of the best in FCS too. There's obviously bigger, you know, and all that. but. Um, but but this it, it can be an edge, and so it being the you know it's history first United Athletic Conference game hosted by the Bears. Um, it's a chance to witness history and hopefully get us on the right on the top end of the of the conference like our women's soccer team uh, is right now. If we can be at the top of the mountain after this weekend looking down, then that's that that's a good thing, and that that shows that uh, that we that battle tested team that we have is boding well for us moving forward. So. Um, excited about the opportunity and, and, and looking forward to uh, looking forward to this weekend against a, a, a very very good Abilene Christian program. With that, any questions on the weekend or, or moving forward? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> very similar. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, I think it does. I mean, and 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 obviously, like what we've done here is amazing, and it's going to continue to grow, and it's going to continue. We we have to we have to as a program, not just football, but as an athletic department, keep pushing the envelope um, because this we're in a unique setting here in Conway, Arkansas. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you get a chance to go to a premier Power Five program like Oklahoma State, and obviously, you know that that speaks for itself. I mean. You know, there's only there's only a handful of programs that look like that. But then you go see someone that is, par you know, parallel to you with, at the FCS level, and you see what that looks like. Uh, it, you know, that's what you want. And 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 as a player, um, and as a coach, I mean, it, it it should add fire to you. It should add excitement to you. It should say, hey, that's what it looks like. Let's strive to be that. And so, I think we had a great great practice last night. Uh, after a loss like that, we had a great team meeting, just talking real. Um, about where we're at and where we want to be, um, and I think I think look, there a lot of these teams we're playing at, at our level of football. 
they're well ahead of us. You know, they're well ahead of us as far as this Division One thing. But remember, we're still pretty dang young in this Division One thing as far as athletic department, but, but as a football program too. So um, you see what it looks like, and you want to keep pushing for that. Um, and, and playing in games like that, I would a lot rather play in a game like that than go play someone that you can beat up on. I, 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 that's just my opinion. And so I think it makes you better. I think, it, again, it does. It adds fire to your program, um, and it challenges you. And if you're not being challenged, you're not growing. And so growth happens with challenge, and, and we've been challenged so far. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we ended with eight or nine penalties, and I'm not sure what they ended with, but I think three of the three of those were undisciplined penalties, what I would call undisciplined penalties. So the a procedure penalty we false started because of you know crowd noise or whatever it was, um, you know, and 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 I'm not going to do what John said and talk about iffy iffy refing, you know, <laughs> but but I'm not going to say. <laughs> no, it, it is. It, you know, it is what it is, and and, I, and that's what I that's why I told our players last night. I mean, if you watch the way North Dakota State plays, I mean, they were getting us on the edge of them, and they were torquing us and doing a great job. But within the frameworks, I mean, that that's what they're teaching their guys to do, and they're really good at it. And so we've got to learn to chop, rip, get off of it, do things to avoid it. And so if it's not going to be called, or if or if or if these refs have a have a slower trigger on a holding call or whatever it is, we got to we have to adjust to that. And so um, that's that's something we'll work on and get better at. And um, yeah, I mean, it is, and it's a different different style of play up there. It's just man, they're going to they're 12, 13 personnel, two and three tight ends. I mean, you don't see that a lot in our conference. And so um, some of it it was an adjustment, but yeah, we've we've, we've got to be more disciplined. We'll we'll get better as far as the penalties go. Yeah, so I was asked in a post-game interview about one, I guess, a North Dakota State beat writer or somebody up there, and uh, they, they just asked me to compare the two, and I said there was a, a ton of similarities. You know, I just, you know, I was pretty quick with my answer. I, it, I, that question kind of caught me off guard a little bit, um, but they said, you know, if you had to put your money on who would win between North Dakota State and Oklahoma State, I was like, well, I don't really want to answer that because I don't want to offend either one of them. Um, but it would be hard for me to bet against North Coast State. Um, that program is is top notch, and it probably probably depend on who had the home game um, because those atmospheres are are elite and uh, and they're an advantage. Um, but but both programs, man, just just really top notch, and 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 the and the the, the accommodations and the and the and the. Uh, the people there were great too. I mean, they were very accommodating to our program, um, very first class experience for our coaches, our players, I think our administration, um, just just a great setting. So, um, but two great programs and great experiences for us. Obviously wish we were 2-0, and but we aren't. Yes, sir. Well, are you teaching me how to hold? So you I don't know if we're athletic enough to get on the edge. You know, like our big guys, here's what North Dakota State does, and they've got the ability to do this. And look, so they're notorious for taking six foot six, six foot seven, 230 pound high school freshmen, or excuse me, college freshmen, high school seniors, and putting them in their program. So you're getting an athletic kid that may have played tight end in, 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 in high school. They're getting a kid that might have been an undersized tackle, but he's long. And they're feeding them, and they're putting them in their training table, and they're 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 grooming them. And next thing you know, like they, they they've got a third, fourth year player that's six foot six, six foot seven, 320 pounds because they've just packed the weight on him, and he's already athletic. So um, that's that's why they're so good at that. They're just twitchy. You know, those guys are big, but they're twitchy and they're long. Um, oh yeah, we're gonna gain every edge you can. If you're not doing that, you're not coaching, right, Ron? You know that. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to try to get every edge we can. But it's impressive. That's an impressive deal. They had a second-round draft pick last year. They're starting left tackle. He's a starting left guard for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers now. He, he's, the, he's the one that had the long red hair, has no teeth. Y'all seen that picture? Well, anyways, he, he, uh, he, uh, he came there as a six-foot-five, 220-pound tight end that they turned into an All-American tackle. And by the time he left, he was a second-round draft pick and was 315 pounds, six-foot-six. Six. You know, I mean, that's just what they do. Um, it's hard for us to do. I mean, it's, it's just where we're at location-wise. I mean, they get those 
big corn fed boys that, that are up in Iowa and Wisconsin and all that area. We, we can't, it, it's hard, tough for us to do that. But, um, but yeah, we're going to do everything we can, I promise. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. So Fraser, uh, Fraser's doing good. Um, had a successful surgery. Matter of fact, he was out at practice wheeling around on his car on a scooter last night. Um, just you know, he's one of those fun-loving guys that just needs to be around the team. So it's good that he's up and going. Um, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Scott Smith here in town did his surgery. Uh, said it's going to be probably eight weeks or so non-weight bearing. Um, and then they'll start rehab, but he expects a full recovery um, this time next year. Fraser Rose will be our, our starting right tackle. I mean, he's 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 that that's that's the anticipation. He'll probably, for hopefully, be able to get a medical red shirt this year um, because of the injury happening early in the first game. Um, but yeah, he's doing great and in great spirits. And and what a great great kid to represent our program. He really is. I hate him not being out there because he's really good. Thought he had all conference caliber ability for us this year, um, but but it's he's doing great. Yes, sir. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Again, busy week. Starts tonight with the coaches show out at walk-ons at 7. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we have a home event. So. Which one? It was uh, – which goal was it? Gabby Theus' goal was number four on Sports Center. Six? Excuse me, number six on Sports Center. So that's pretty impressive that we can get a, a highlight on, on SportsCenter with all that's going on this time of year. You can imagine how many are sent in each week or each day. So pretty impressive for us. Anyone else have anything that we've missed? If not, hope to see you out at a lot of events this week. Go Bears, go Sugar Bears.